friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a May mashup video and this is going to include my May wrap up, my May book haul um, with very few stats. I'm going to talk about some books I DNF'd and some books that I am currently reading. I'm just going to share everything I possibly can in this video and I will have timestamps so you can click around and check out what you are interested in. Also, I'm not going to share, I'm not going to check in with my reading goals and I didn't do a TBR so we're just going to jump right into the books. We'll start with the books that I am currently reading. I'm currently reading two books. I'm currently reading People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry and I am also currently reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, this one I am on the third like short story of the 12 and on this one I am on chapter 9. So I'm reading reading both of these. I do hope to finish them before the end of the month and once I do and I have full thoughts on them I will share that in the next month's wrap up for you guys. Awesome books that I DNF'd this month. I DNF'd Black Chalk by Christopher J. Yates and I DNF'd Cracked Up to Be by Courtney Summers. Um, I was reading these for a vlog which you will eventually see when I finish it but um, this one, I was reading it. The writing was just really, really weird. Um, no chapters. Um, it just had these little, I'll show you. Oh, there was one. It had little breaks like this with Roman numerals. Um, I made it to page 79 before I gave up on that one. And then Cracked Up To Be, I really wanted to love this one, but I gave up on this one on page... 41. So let's jump into the books that I did actually manage to read this month. So the first book that I read is Pretty Stolen Dolls by Karduki and Kay Webster and I rated this five out of five stars. It was so different than I initially thought it was going to be. I was assuming that this was a dark romance story um, and it does definitely have dark themes but it's more of a dark suspense thriller mystery and I really 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 enjoyed it obviously I gave it five stars and in that same video where I read this one I also read Twist Me which is book one by Anna Zares and in this one basically you have two young girls that get kidnapped when one is like 12 one is 14 they get kidnapped and the guy keeps them for a very long time one of the sisters escapes and she grows up to be a detective and she's working homicides and missing persons cases, always trying to find the man that kidnapped her and her sister. And she's working two different cases that kind of are reminding her of her kidnapper and hoping that it leads to her kidnapper. And it was just really, really crazy, but it definitely does have a lot of sex in it, um, but it's not the kidnapper it's somebody else so you don't have to be worried about that but definitely still do your research going into this check out that vlog for more of my thoughts and I list all of the trigger warnings and content warnings in the description box of that video so I will have that video linked for you in the description box of this video and then I read the oh and also I enjoyed this so much that I picked up the second book and I definitely want to continue in the series it's a four book series I believe. All right, then I picked up Twist Me, and like I said, I read it in that same vlog. And this one I had higher hopes for. Um, it just kind of became a little repetitive because basically you have this woman who was kidnapped and taken to an island, and you are just on an island the entire time with her. And there's only so much you can do on an island when you're kidnapped. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the longer I sit and think about this book. I do think I want to continue. I believe it's a trilogy, so I do think I want to continue on. It's just not like at the top of my priority list. Um, I don't have any of the other books, so I will have to purchase them or see if I can borrow them, but I don't think these type of books are available at my library, so I will definitely probably have to purchase them, um, but like I said, if you want more of my full thoughts, you can definitely check out that video. I will have it linked down below for you. I rated Pretty Stolen Dolls 
Girls 5 stars and I rated Twist Me 2.5 stars. Then I read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and I have never read this classic before or at least it's been a very very long time. I think the last time I read it was like maybe it was my freshman year of high school. So it's been a while and I don't really remember if it was this one or Great Expectations. I almost think it was Great Expectations. So I don't actually know if I've ever read this before. Anyway, I read it now and I do see the appeal. I just don't think it was for me. It did have some cool elements to it. But I think this is definitely a book like for classics, I'm finding there are some that I just like immediately like and those are more of like the middle grade young adult classics. But for these adult classics, I really wish that I could have read them or could read them in an academic setting or just have people in my life that I could talk to about it further because I think this is like a discussion type of book. I it unrated because I think that it's a book, like I said, that, I don't know, I feel like you have to read this one multiple times to get enough out of it. And I read it so quickly because it is so short, but I have this beautiful edition so I can go back and read it maybe and dissect it and look things up on the internet, you know, those type of things, talk to some people about it and see if I like it a little bit more. But for now, I just left it unrated. Next up, I picked up Fever Dream by Samantha. I always mess up this author's last name, so not gonna try. This title fits this short story perfectly because the entire time you're reading it or the entire time I was reading it I felt like I was in a fever dream it was so weird that I honestly don't even know what to tell you about the story um it's about this woman and crazy stuff happens and you're kind of getting like things that happened in the past and the present and they're not making sense and <sighs> you just have to read it. If you like weird books, I highly recommend you read this. I do have a Goodreads review and a Storygraph review on all of the books that I have read. So if you're interested in my thoughts, check out my review. But like, if you like weird books, I highly recommend this one. Um, it is a translated book from Spanish, I believe. Yeah, so definitely check it out if you're interested. It literally is like a fever dream though. Like I'm still confused. It's, it's a strange one. Sorry, I can't really explain it more. Then I picked up The Lost Village by Camilla Sten. And this was a book that I had on my most anticipated books of the year. And I was really, really excited about it. I thought it was gonna be like kind of a documentary, part ghost story. And it was in a way, but I would say it leans heavier towards the documentary aspect of the story. So if you don't know, it's about this woman that is trying to fund a documentary. So she goes to this village and I guess she has family ties to it and she takes a small crew out there and they're just documenting the village and trying to get um, like pictures and like clips of video um, to kind of sell it as like a documentary. Um, does that make sense? So you do have the setup um, documentary filmmaker Alice. Um, so it's basically this old mining town that everybody disappeared and nobody knows what happened to all of the people. Um, so she's going there and it also has like past bits from like the 50s, like this one's August 19th, 1959. So you have these kind of like letters almost from the past and it's told in past and present. Um, the thing is, is that it is slow going. And like I said, it is more heavily focused on the documentary and walking around the village and also the interaction of the characters and things that happen to them as they are investigating the village. I will say that as I was reading it, 
I could have easily put the book down at any time and DNF'd it, but I was, I just really wanted to see what it was about um, because two of my friends, Jacqueline and Jesse, both DNF'd this and I was determined to read it and see like if they made a good decision. And sadly, I could totally see like people either really, really loving this or really, really not. Um, and for me, it was just okay. Like it was a book, it was okay. But the ending part, I wish, and the themes and the messages at the end, like when you find out what happened to all of these people and the certain person and just things that happened, I wish that would have been a little bit more like heavy handed, a little bit more like in your face, a little bit more of the main plot of the book. And I think it would have been way more interesting. However, since it's not, um, and it's just towards the end, like maybe the last 50 pages or so, um, there are like sprinkles throughout, but it just, it, it just definitely wasn't enough. And you don't even kind of know what you're reading or you don't even see where it's going. I'm just trying to be very vague because it's obviously a huge spoiler. Um, but yeah, so I ended up rating this one three stars because I do like documentaries and I felt like I was kind of behind the scenes watching a documentary take place. And I really did like the themes at the end. But overall, just an average story. Um, and I don't know if I will pick anything else up by this author. I mean, maybe, it just depends. So we shall see. And I read Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. And I was planning to do a vlog reading some more thrillers and mysteries. I didn't get to do that this month. I apologize. More will be coming in the future. Don't worry. Um, but I did read this this month and I did enjoy it. I rated it 3.5 stars. Um, again, it was a little bit slower paced of a story and the good portions were so few and far in between that it, I really couldn't justify a higher star rating. So you have this um, low level publishing employee, Florence, and she works at this publishing house and then for reasons she gets fired and like as soon as she gets fired, this really like famous um, uh, author that no one knows like their real identity, like so the pseudonym of the author is Maude Dixon, like nobody knows who this author is. So you have no idea who Maude Dixon is. They don't know if it's a guy, they don't know if it's a girl, they just, they, they don't even know. Uh, but they get reached out to and said, hey, would you like to assist, be the assistant for Maude Dixon? And of course she's like, oh my gosh, yes, um, wonderful opportunity. And they're like, you really have to think about it because you have to sign a non-disclosure and you can never reveal the identity and you can never like put it down on your resume that you worked for this person and you know, all of this stuff. And she's just kind of kind of stuck in limbo in her life. Uh, she's living in New York and she's from Florida. And so she doesn't have the best relationship with her mom. Her mom's always kind of like wanting more, expecting her to do like greater things when really she's doing what she loves. And she's kind of stuck. She hasn't been able to write in a while. And obviously she wants to be an author. So she thinks great opportunity, go make some money, assist one of the best up and coming authors um, and all of this. So she goes out, she, you know, has her little interview or whatever, and she starts working for this um, Maude Dixon. And she immediately kind of gets entrapped in her life and super involved and wants to know like what she's writing and she has to like transcribe her notes and like write her book and stuff. But Maud Dixon's next book is set in Morocco. So Maud Dixon and Florence go to Morocco on this trip. And when they go there, things don't exactly go as planned. 
and it's very interesting. I loved the setting, like the brief setting in New York, and I loved seeing Morocco and just kind of the things that happened there. Um, it definitely had like some predictable things happen, but it also had some unpredictable things happen. Um, so if you're looking to try out like a new author, I would definitely go ahead and give this a shot. Um, it just didn't quite get there for me, um, and I wasn't like quite invested, but I also was kind of a little bit not in a reading mood when I read it so I'm not really sure but I definitely will be picking up more from this author in the future. I do recommend this but just know that it's not like a thriller it's more of a mystery and a more like slow mystery. And I picked up The Body by Stephen King and this is a novella that was originally published in like a collection of short stories um, and I quite enjoyed this one you guys. I gave Gave it four stars and I do have a reading vlog of this coming soon so you will see that. I also watched Stand By Me which is the movie based on this novella and I'm hoping to do a book versus the movie which was better like I did for Bird Box so you will hear all of my thoughts about this coming shortly but just know that this is a coming of age story um, following um, Gordy and three of his friends and they are are um, going on this little adventure to try to find this dead body of a kid their age that um, the body is like along these railroad tracks or whatever and yeah it's just it's a very interesting story and since I've watched both it's like so fresh in my mind. Definitely check out that vlog when I post it and I'm going to do the book versus the movie hopefully as well um, but if you follow me on Instagram I let you know what videos are upcoming and I usually post on Sundays and Mondays so um, definitely, you know, keep your eyes out for that. I read a couple of graphic novels. I read Sunny Side Up by Jennifer L. Holm and Matthew Holm. And this is the first book in a trilogy graphic of graphic novels. And I really, really enjoyed this sweet little story about Sunny, who is going to spend the summer with her grandfather in Florida. And um, you also get flashbacks leading up to what led her parents to send her to Florida for the summer and it has to do with her brother and um, substance abuse. Um, so I wasn't expecting like such a hard topic to be tackled in this middle grade graphic novel and I love the the mix, the balance of sadness of the situation and what was going on with her family because um, she's from Pennsylvania. So her mother, her father, and her brother are there and they ship her away for the summer to stay with her grandfather in this like retirement community. So there's like not a lot of kids around and her grandfather's kind of like set in his ways, you know. Um, but it's really fun because she does end up meeting this boy there and they go on like little adventures and stuff like that. But also just like flashbacks to what was happening at home and, you know, just the really sadness of that balanced with like this happy, fun vacation in this retirement home. And um, they do have this note from um, the authors in the back and it just says that sometimes it's hard to be a kid it can never be harder when someone you love has a drug and alcohol abuse problem like Sunny, they had a close relative who had serious issues with substance abuse. As children, we were bystanders to this behavior and yet it affected our whole world. It made us feel ashamed and embarrassed and scared and sad. Most of all, it was something that we felt we had to keep secret. So they wrote this book so that young readers who are facing these same problems today don't feel ashamed like they did. And I just like almost teared up like reading that you know, when I was reading this and stuff like that. So yeah, I really did like the artwork as well. So I definitely recommend this if you don't mind like middle grade graphic novels. I rated this one five stars and I did pick up the second one. Um, I was looking to pick up the third one, but they didn't have a copy. So that's definitely on my radar to pick up because I just really love it and I need to see where it goes. All right, the second graphic novel I read this month is Stargazing by Jen Wang. 
everything and oh, this was so freaking cute um, I absolutely loved it I've read both of Jen Wang's previous graphic novels in real life and The Prince and the Dressmaker and I enjoyed both of those so I knew I had to get my hands on this and it's such a cute story and it has so much diversity in it it's basically a blossoming friendship between um, Moon and Christine and it's a very they have a very short time together but their friendship just blossoms and it's so nice to see. You have Christine who is from a very strict like Chinese American family. Um, she goes to um, like they have like Chinese class and she can't paint her toenails and I don't know like all of those like I'm assuming cultural things if you have like traditional type parents and then you have Moon who is like being raised by a single mother and they're Buddhist, they're vegetarian, they're like thicker skinned ladies, both her mom and her. So there's like racial diversity, diet diversity, body diversity. There's so much fun stuff in here and I just absolutely loved the story. I loved the art. I just wanted more. Um, the only reason I gave this four stars instead of five stars is there were some times throughout reading the entire story, there were just certain parts that felt like if they would have added a couple extra panels or a couple of extra pages to like fill in some of the gaps for a more smooth transition into the next scene. Um, I wish that the stargazing aspect um, would have been a little bit stronger as well. Um, but if you don't know anything what this is about, the, um, and this isn't, it's a fictional story, but it's based on real life events from the author's life. Um, and this, they have pictures in the back showing her surgery. Um, so yeah, so it definitely takes a turn. Um, so you have this new blossoming friendship and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden something devastating kind of happens and you have to work through that. Um, it's a very beautiful story. I loved Christine and I adored Moon. Um, and yeah, I just love their friendship and they're kind of like opposites. And I just, oh, I would definitely read more from these characters. Um, I doubt there's any more coming because I've never known Jen Wayne to write like sequels or anything like that. But if she ever does, I'm picking it up because I'll pick up anything that Jen Wayne does. I also, of course, read The Soulmate Equation by Christine. Christina Lauren and rated this five out of five stars. I loved this. It was everything I wanted it to be. Um, it was a great romance. It followed the traditional romance formula. Um, it had great characters. It had great subplots. It had an interesting premise and I totally adored the couple. I loved her best friend. I love that it followed a single working mother that had a child and yeah, that she had to, she couldn't just dive headlong into a relationship without considering her daughter. Um, she also got raised by her grandparents. She has a very difficult relationship with her mother. Um, there's just so many layers to this story and I absolutely loved it. I did a reading vlog on release day for this and I will never forget that experience, of course. So if you're interested in watching that, hearing more of my full thoughts and basically pitching you the book, um, I will have that linked down down in the description box for you, but I absolutely loved this. In a couple of videos I've been sprinkling in book hauls and stuff. Um, I have a couple of videos coming where I talk about some books. Um, also in my soulmate equation, I shared a little book haul in that. Um, I recently posted like a small little book haul. It's like new books. Um, and then I probably have some other new books and other videos coming. So you just have to keep your eye out. Um, but I have four other books that I recently got that I'm going to go ahead and share now. So I can just wrap up the month of May, go on my little vacay and enjoy my best friend's birthday weekend. Um, Okay, so I have four books here to show you. The first one was actually sent, uh, the first one was actually sent to me. 
The first one was kindly sent to me from Simon and Schuster. I heard about this book from Jacqueline. We talked about it on our podcast and she mentioned it and I said, wow, that sounds really good. And it's Cheat Day by Liv Stratman. And this is a debut novel about a woman that kind of becomes obsessed with uh, like dieting and food. Smart and funny debut novel about the unexpected consequences of one woman's attempts to exert control over her life by adhering to a strict health regimen. And um, yeah, I I did read the full synopsis, but that's basically what it's about. Um, so I do want to do this in a video. I haven't decided if I'll do like a reading vlog or just like a review or what type of video I'm going to do, but I will be talking about this in the future at some point. I also picked up these two books. Um, I was right in my soulmate equation. And my good friend Nikki from my book club did in fact pre-order me The Soulmate Equation for my birthday. And I also purchased it on release day from Barnes & Noble. So I was able to take the one that I purchased back to Barnes & Noble and keep the one that she sent me. Um, so I had a gift card because they could do like store credit or like cash back or whatever. So I was like just store credit. So I paid a little bit more, but I got two books. I picked up Meet Me in Paradise by Libby Hubschwer. I don't know how to say the last name at all. And this sounds super cute. I just went to the romance section and I was like, I want a romance. Romance-a-thon is coming up, um, as you guys probably know, from June 12th through the 18th. And I'm just really excited and I just wanted to have another option on my shelves. Um, so this one, it's a um, self-discovery, sister bonds, and a slow-burning romance that's 100% pure pleasure. Never read anything by this author before, so that does fit one of the prompts. Okay, and I also picked up The Jigsaw Man, and I know this is like a thriller, horror, not really sure what category to fit it into, um, but I am excited. It is a serial killer and his copycat are locked in a violent game of cat and mouse. Can D.I. Angelica Henley stop them before it's too late? I love the cover. Like, love the cover. All right, and the last book I got, Jacqueline sent me. She read it. She loved it. She's letting me borrow it. I'm going to be returning it to her because she's collecting all of this author's books. And it is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. And I have read Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson, and I enjoyed that. And I'm hoping to like this one more because I've heard it's more like thrilling, mysterious. Thank you so much for letting me borrow this, Jacqueline. But yeah, I'm going to read this and return this to her um, at some point. <laughs> at some point. So those are the books that I am currently reading, books I DNF'd, books I read, books I hauled. This is the May mashup. Like I said, I will talk about the two books that I'm currently reading next month. We will also check in with my reading goals. Um, but yeah, next month is romance a so get hyped. Um, but yeah, I just had to kind of wrap it up so I can go celebrate with my friends. Um, but yeah, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again in another video very soon. Bye. Also, how cute is my new shirt from Hello Lovely.